Okay, let's go and talk about the Praxis Elementary Education Multiple Subjects Exam and the test code on that exam is 5001 and 5003. Now, because you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take this exam and that is fantastic as we uh, certainly need as many great teachers as we possibly can get. So thank you very much for being a teacher or being interested in working towards being an educator. That is fantastic. And uh, what I have for you here is a practice problem. I'll show it to you in a second um, that you should have an answer pretty easily if you are fully prepared for this exam. Uh, now, let me actually just show you the problem right now. So if you want to pause the video, you can work on it. So what we're going to be doing here, I have two numbers, 18 and 60, and I want you to find the least common multiple and the greatest common factor. And feel free to use a calculator, but I really want you to think about how you would explain this. Okay, In other words, justify your answer. So uh, hopefully you, these are some pretty basic math concepts. You'll certainly need to understand this for this particular exam. But if you want to pause the video and work on it, that is great. I'll show you the answer to this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. And uh, over the years, I've constructed many uh, specialty math courses to include a test prep course for this particular Praxis exam. Uh, matter of fact, I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video, but you definitely don't want to go in and uh, not be prepared on exam day. A lot of uh, uh, people do fail these exams. Remember, this is a professional certification exam, and you need to know a good amount of math, certainly far beyond uh, what uh, most elementary teachers think. You need to know a lot of middle and certainly high school math as well. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into this problem. So we have 18 and 60. We want to find the least common multiple and the greatest common factor. So it's basically two questions uh, with these two numbers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. So the answer is the following. Okay, so we got 180 for the LCM. And six is the GCF, right? So greatest common factor, least common multiple. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, how to find the LCM. And the best way to find the LCM, okay, is certainly uh, to understand what it is, right? So, you know, you can kind of just go by the acronym here, LCM. This is the least common multiple, all right? So least common multiple. So let's take a look at these two numbers. And just kind of understand the directions here. We want to find the least common multiple. So a common multiple. So it's a good idea that we understand what a multiple is, right? So let's take a look at multiples of 18. So 18 times 1 is 18. Okay, that's a multiple of 18. 18 times 2 is 36. That's a multiple of 18. 18 times 3 is 54. That is a multiple of 18 and so forth, right? So you can go on and on and on and list out the multiples for, uh, for 18. But what we're trying to do is find a common multiple between 18 and 60. So let's take a look at some uh, multiples of 60. So 60 times 1 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. 60 times 3 is 180. Now you see here that as I continue to list multiples of 18, eventually I get to 180. And then I could see my first multiple that I have in common is 180. And a matter of fact, it's the least common multiple, right? So there is no other multiples if we look at the list of 18 up until we reach 180. And then this list here. So 180 is the least common multiple. Now, uh, one approach to finding the LCM is, in fact, listing out the multiples and just kind of looking, uh, identifying that least common multiple. But actually, there is a better way because these numbers here are pretty easy to work with relative to more challenging numbers. Like, let's say I asked you, what is the LCM of uh, between five, uh, 756 and 1024, right? So this would uh, be much more difficult. Now, why do we learn about the LCMs? Just a little side note here. If you are trying to add two fractions, Let's say I'm trying to add these two fractions here. Now, these are, this is a pretty big denominator, but let's say I have 108 as a denominator here and uh, 65 here. We can't add fractions unless we have the common denominator, okay? And the common denominator is effectively 
the uh, LCM of these two numbers. Okay, so that's why we need to understand the LCM, kind of its most practical use is determining the LCD between two or more fractions. Okay, so let's go and take a look at a better way. Okay, conceptually you need to understand LCM, but uh, this is uh, kind of the um, better approach to uh, solving, you know, problems, especially that involve fractions, i.e. Um, when you're trying to determine the LCD. So basically what we're going to do is take the numbers involved. In this case, we have 18 and 60. And the question again is we're trying to identify the LCM. Now, before you learn this method, you need to just conceptually understand what the LCM is. And that's what I just explained right here. So how do we uh, find or how can we find uh, the uh, lowest common multiple between two or more numbers? Well, what you want to do is build a factor tree, okay? So you want to list all the prime factors of um, the respective numbers. So for 18 uh, and 60, let me show you how we build a factor tree. So you just start factoring. Uh, you find two uh, factors. You can have 6 and 3. It doesn't make a difference. You'll eventually get to the same prime factor. So you want to keep going here and circle prime factors as you go. So 9 times 2, 2 is prime, so I'll circle it. 9 is not prime, so I can continue to factor, so that's 3 times 3, and then I'll bring down this 2. So 3 times 3 times 2 is 18. These are all the prime factors of 18, and you want to be able to, uh, you want to write repeating factors as uh, powers. So 3 times 3 is 3 squared, and this is really important. I'll show you why here in a second. So 3 squared, or 9 times 2, is 18. So this is the prime factors of 18. Okay, so let's go do this for 60 as well. So we have 6 times 10. Now, again, you can, you can go use different factors right here. doesn't make a difference. You'll get to the same prime factors. So 6 is 3 times 2. These are prime, so I'll circle these. 10 is 2 times 5. These are prime. So here we have 3 times 2 times 2 times 5. So 2 times 2 is, we can write that as 2 squared. Remember, anytime you have a repeating factor, write uh, factors, write them, excuse me, as uh, powers. Okay, so 2 times 2 is 2 squared times 3 times 5 is 60. Okay, so once we've done all that work, it's pretty easy to identify the LCM. What we need to do is represent each of the prime factors between both numbers. So here's all the prime factors here, and here's all the prime factors here of these numbers. So each of the prime uh, factors needs to be represented. So for example, here is a 5. Okay, we need to have a 5 represented. In our LCM. Now here is where it gets interesting. Okay, so we have a three squared here in the three. Now this three is really three to the first. So do we put three uh, squared and three to the first in our LCM? No. What you need to do is to only take the highest power. Okay, of that number. So in this case, it's three squared. Okay, that's why it's important that you write your uh, prime factors if you have multiple uh, uh, repeating uh, prime factors as powers, okay? Because you have to identify the highest power. So here we have three squared, here we have three to the first. We take the highest power, three squared. Here we have two to the first right here, and this is two to the second. So which one are we gonna take? The highest power, two to the second, and uh, we'll have that in our LCM. So now we have two squared times three squared times five. Two squared is four. 3 squared is what? 9 times 5. And when you do this uh, multiplication right here, you get 180. Okay, so this is definitely a procedure that you're going to want to understand. But, uh, of course, uh, you know, we, we first need to understand what is the LCM. Okay, so now let's move on to the GCF, the greatest common factor between two numbers. So we have 18 and 60. And just like the LCM, we can kind of um, you know, understand what the GCF by just reading the acronym. It's the greatest common factor. Okay, so we're looking at common factors and we want to select uh, the greatest. So we can use the factor tree approach is a, a really easy way to do this. So we're looking at the factors of each of these numbers and we're trying to identify the greatest uh, common factor. So again, we go through the factor tree. So we know that 18 is three times three times two. Okay, of course you see I have some things uh, circled here. But again, 18, the prime factors is three times three times two. 60, it's three times two times two times five. Now what we wanna do 
is identify common factors between these two numbers, okay? So you can see I'm just gonna start circling. So I have a three here, and I have two threes right here, but I only have one three, so I can only circle one three as common factor. This has two threes, this only has one three, so they only have one three in common. So I have a two here, and I have two twos here, okay? So they only have one two in common. So three and two, are the factors, okay, the common factor. So three times two is six. So the greatest common factor is uh, six. And you kind of uh, see that um, when you think as, well, you know what, what is the biggest number that goes into both of these? Well, six times three is uh, the, the greatest common factor because six times three is 18. And then six times 10 is 60, okay? So this is our GCF and our GCF. Okay, so if you got this right, that is excellent. If you didn't, just use this as feedback. But even if you got this right, uh, that certainly doesn't mean that you're ready for all the topics that you're going to see on this particular praxis exam. There's going to be uh, quite a bit of um, high school level math, algebra, geometry, etc. So whether you use my course, my course is extremely comprehensive. Um, you know, and of course, I understand. Uh, you know, as a math teacher and somebody who's taken praxis exams, what you're going to be facing. So whether it's my course or some other program, just make sure you are fully prepared. You want to over prepare, okay, for this exam for two reasons. One, you want to pass it on the first time. And two, you want to have the math, you know, skills that you can bring, you know, uh, to the classroom, right? It's going to make you a better teacher. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on this particular praxis. Thank you for your time and have a great day.